Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Wheeler, and I am back with another flashback set review. Uh, because what kind of asshole would I be if I just left you with Fate Reforged without taking a look at Dragons of Tarkir? This is another one of the sets that I didn't get to do a review video for, and frankly didn't pay any attention to when it came out. That said, I know a couple of these cards from you know, falling back into magic online maybe a bit. Don't judge me too harshly, please. I'm just one man. But anyways, let's put that aside and let's get right into the set. First off, we have Zergo Bellstriker, a uh, one red mana for a 2-2 Orc Warrior. Legendary creature, not that that matters much. Zergo can't block creatures with power 2 or greater and dash for 2. It's a uh, one mana 2-2 two -two in red. Uh, it has a downside, air quote. Uh, but, I mean, you don't... Wh why are you blocking with this guy? You're supposed to be killing people. And he's got an upside with the dash mechanic, being able to kind of jab them without committing to the board. This guy's great. Uh, I can't really see him being cut from any kind of mono-red or hyper-aggressive one-drop deck uh, anytime soon. Up next, we have Thunderbreak Regent. 2-2 two two red for a 4-4 four four flying dragon. Uh, whenever a dragon you control becomes the target of a spell or a building an opponent controls, Thunderbreak Regent deals 3 damage to that player. So it's got kind of this uh, retro-mancer, lava-runner, kind of old-school ability tacked onto it. Uh, and it's a 4-4 four four fire flyer for 4. Uh, I love this card, personally. I didn't even know this card existed until it, I, it started popping up uh, in... <clears throat> standard matches <clears throat> and it, I was surprised it just it's a 4-4 four, four flyer for 4 that's great that's great value value already and if somebody tries to kill it with something or any other dragon you might have uh, uh, it shocks or it bolts them which is fantastic I like this guy in Dragon Stompy I like this guy in Big Red I mean maybe even he ends up being like an end curve in uh, or not Enker, I guess like somewhere in like a mid-range kind of deck. And like, throw him, play him with Ancient Tomb is what uh, what I'm re really trying to say. Speaking of cards I want to play with Ancient Tomb, uh, Sorok the Hunt Caller. Two and two green for a 5-4 Legendary Human Warrior and has Formidable. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if creatures you control have total power 8 or greater, greater target creature you control gains haste until end of turn. Um, so this guy is another guy that I want to see alongside Ancient Tombs or a lot of mana dorks. Um, it seems like getting five, or getting to 8 power is really difficult. I mean, that's a lot of fucking power. But this guy brings 5 of it, so it's not that hard. Uh, the card kind of reads as this 4 mana 5-4 with haste, and then... Next turn, he can give another one of your guys haste. So if you play another big dumb fatty and he manages to survive, they have haste. Uh, I don't like him in like a red green deck. Again, uh, the problem with stuff like red green, Naya, uh, even Rug, Jun, these aggressive decks is that the four drop slot is super competitive. Maybe this guy gets in because he's got haste and gives other things haste, but. It's so hard to beat out the value of something like Bloodbraid Elf or like FTK, anything like that. I mean, you, you have your you have your choice of big dumb idiot. So why choose him for your big dumb idiot? Um, on the other hand, in something like Mono Green or just like like a Mono Green uh, Stompy list or like an Ancient Tomb Stompy list with like where you want every damn Blastoderm in the history of Magic. Uh, I think this guy is an auto-include. Of course, that's not exactly the most popular archetype, but who knows, maybe a video or two involving those kind of decks will be coming out in the future. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Stratus Dancer. One in a blue for a 2-1. Jin Monk, like that creature type, with flying. And it has Megamorph, which I still can't get over that name. Megamorph for one in a blue. So it's... Pretty much just morph, but if you flip it up, it gets a 1-1 counter on it. Uh, and it has, when it's turn faced up, counter target instant or sorcery spell. Uh, honestly, I'm just including this because it's a flyer with 2 power that has a, another ability attached to it. In the flymen.deck and skies.deck, a um, bunch of those things, I can see somebody making an argument to uh, playing this card in... 
uh, tempo-based strategy, you know, at least having a vase of threat that uh, if you draw it late, it's not entirely dead. Um, yeah, the card's fine. I It's not as... Uh, maybe you even play it in, like, a control list. No, that actually seems like the worst. Um, yeah, card's fine. Nothing super exciting. Uh, Silumgar Assassin. So, one in a black for two unhuman assassin. Creatures with power greater than Silumgar's assassin. Silumgar Assassin's power can't block it. So, creatures with power greater than his power can't block him. Uh, also has Mega Warp for three. And if you turn him face up, destroy a target creature with power three or less. Uh, and opponent controls. So, again, it's a quick I mean you can if you need a goblin piker you've got a goblin piker uh, with a bit of an upside you know evasion attached to it but it has a nice kind of removal side um, that deals with bigger threats and if it's got three power there's also a chance it has increased three power or greater there's a chance it has more toughness if it's got more toughness black might not have the easiest time dealing with some of these threats um, it also doesn't discriminate as to like color or um, creature type. It just has to do with power. I like this guy. You gotta find a shell for him. That's the real problem. Like a mono black mid range, black green mid range, uh, black white. Yeah, world's your oyster on this one. Uh, speaking of oysters, get it? It's an ocean reference because we're up with Shore Crasher Elemental. Uh, I fucking love this guy right off the bat. Triple blue for a 3 3 elemental that has pay one blue, exile the Shore Crasher Elemental, then return it. To the battlefield face down. Pay one, it gets plus one, minus one, or minus one, plus one until end of turn. And then it has Megamorph for five. So I have the ab the biggest crush on like a mono blue devotion deck. Um, you've probably seen the blue moon lists I've shared. Um, the, the like the blue heavy devotion permanent based ones. And this guy obviously fits that shell right away. Three mana for a three three. I mean, it's a train. It's got that trained Arbidon value, but it has an ability to protect itself. It has, or it has two abilities to protect itself. Really, it's got the. If you increase its toughness, it can get around burn. Uh, if you just exile it, it gets around uh, targeted removal. And when you really need to put on pressure, you can crack in for five or so. If it's Megamorphed, you get to crack in for even more because it's got the one one counter on it. It's it's a nice card. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, please don't hate on this card too much. I mean, I imagine it's actually, like, there's not much this guy can do outside of obviously a heavy blue deck, but uh, I'm a big fan. Shaman of Forgotten Ways. Two and a green, two, three, human shaman. Tap, add two mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool. Use it only on creature spells. Formidable, nine and two green. Uh, tap. Each player's life total becomes the number of creatures he or she controls. Activate this ability only if uh, the creatures you control have power 8 or greater. So, it has a biorhythm effect uh, for the formidable, but really, if you're playing it, it's for the mana acceleration. And the formidable side of this is surprisingly relevant. Um, these kind of cards, the uh, Sobberwald Sage variety, or even just like the three mana elves that add two, so uh, Findorn Elver, Greenweaver Druid, um, oh, I'm, I'm missing another one, but um, that kind of category of creature, uh, you don't want to play them in your everyday like hyper mana deck, uh, because they're often very, like they are so susceptible to removal. Um, usually a 1-1. One, one. Even at 3 toughness, this thing just dies. And investing that much mana into something uh, kind of sucks for those decks. But in the versions of those decks that have a... there's If there's a lot of combo running around, or if there aren't a lot of board sweepers, I'm a fan of those cards. And this card especially for that kind of archetype because if there's a lot of combo or stacks or whatever non-creature based decks running around you're probably going to have more creatures in them and there are times where they're probably not even going to have a single creature in play um also of note really good if there's a bunch of academy decks running around um so the formidable is actually not that hard to i mean it's hard to achieve it's 11 fucking mana 
uh, and you can't use this guy. But getting to 11 mana with this, those decks, I mean, if, if any deck's going to do it, it's going to be the one with, uh, you know, 46 creatures, guys, cradle, all that jazz. Um, it actually is a win con all in itself, which is quite neat. I mean, maybe that's a little optimistic, but hey, I like it. Uh, again, na got narrow application. Pick your pick your battles with this one, uh, but if you are jamming with the Cradle Hoof deck, uh, I'd consider picking one up. Uh, although now that I think about it, since this is coming out after the set has been released. You probably already have one if you want one, so disregard that. Uh, ooh. Qual Sisma Behemoth. Qual Sisma? Anyways. Two and a red, 5-5. Five, five. Ogre Warrior. Can't attack or block unless you pay two. Uh, the only reason I'm including this is because you can cast it off Ancient Tomb and Amox on turn one, and you can start bashing for five. Um, play. I would play this in the aggressive... So the again, I'm good. There are a lot of cards in this set actually that fall in the category, uh, fall into the archetype spectrum of the ancient tomb uh, stompy decks that look to you know play kind of a a lockdown game either through uh, land destruction, wasteland, strip, uh, all that jazz, uh, as well as sphere effects, Trinisphere, Thorn of Amethyst, um, Tangle Wire, that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's looking to pump out a threat like this as quick as possible. And two mana turn, I mean, sometimes, you're usually in those decks, you're looking to make it so that they can't cast spells, but sometimes consistency bites you in the ass, and you can't cast spells. But don't worry, you can use your mana on hitting them for five, dummy. Uh, this guy's a little too cute, maybe, but uh, if you're looking to build, like, a Blood Moon Stompy list or a Blood Moon Stacks or an all-in red variant, uh, this guy's worth considering. Speaking of that, Pitiless Horde, two and a black for a 5-3 Orc Berserker. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose two life, and then dash for two and two black. Uh, again, easy to cast off Ancient Tomb and a Mox. Uh, clocks in for five, losing two life a turn isn't that bad if you're going to be dealing five damage a turn with this guy. It sucks that he doesn't have trample or any of that, but if you don't want to lose that life, then you can always dash him out. Um, and he's a big enough threat that they kind of have to deal with him, but at the same time, you it's not that much of an investment uh, to get him in play, which is kind of nice. Uh, again, so limited in where you play him. I wouldn't put him in like aggressive black decks, uh, maybe at the top, top, top of your curve, but usually those decks like to curve out at Obliterator and whatnot. Um, so maybe skip on him for that, but, you know, if you have Ancient Tomb, play this guy. And uh, to round out the color spectrum of play this in Ancient Tomb decks, Ojutai Exemplars. Two and two white for a 4-4 four, four human monk, and as Adam Price says, he's a dude. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you choose one. Tap target creature, he gains first strike and life link until end of turn, or exile him, then return him to the battlefield tapped under uh, its owner's control. So, the, it's a 4-4 four, for four, 4, which is kind of nice. Uh, it's got the two colorless, so ancient two mana. Um, it's, you, those kind of decks, well, they do play a good amount of creatures. They aren't hitting past, like, they're around 25 to 31 or so. Is where you're kind of aiming to be if you're a creature heavy version uh, and some versions even play less they'll play 17 creatures 16 creatures um, with a higher curve and more non-creature spells but uh, the ability is to tap one of their guys and or give himself first strike and lifelink if you need to race that's fantastic because hey you're going to be playing some mana rocks uh, that's one of the downsides again consistency coming at you um, you might draw a mana rock after you've already ramped into your threat. So this guy kind of, you know, eases the pain of that. Uh, again, he's just a dude, but uh, I think he's alright. Herald of Dromoka, 2 mana for a 2-2, human warrior, vigilance, other warrior creatures you control have vigilance. Uh, I'm mostly including this because I know that Highlander can be an expensive format, and even decks that seem like they're going to be cheap, such as White Weenie, 
can start adding up if you need to play like Mox Pearl, Rishidan Port, Wasteland, uh, Ravages of War. All these things start stacking up and up. Yeah, Beta Savannah Lines isn't as cheap as it used to be. You know, the absolute essentials. Um, so it's always I always like to kind of throw out alternatives. 2-2 uh, for 2 with Vigilance nothing new we've seen it in like i think steadfast guard all the way back to mercadian masks and there's a couple more since then uh some with even better abilities tacked on but if you're looking for consistency and you're on a budget this guy's not that bad he also pumps out all the other warrior creatures that they've uh ended up sending out in the recent sets uh that you'll want to play anyways um yeah not much uh, other than that Gudul Lurker, Gudul Lurker, uh, I just know him as the Salamander. He's a one mana one one, unblockable, um, and he has Megamorph. So if you really want to spend that four mana, uh, you can do that. Throw him in Flying Men dot deck. That's pretty much all. Uh, maybe Skies if you're not running too many synergy, too many cards based around uh, your creatures actually having the keyword uh flying on it um yeah that's really it grace blade artisan two and a white for two three human monk uh the artisan gets plus two plus two for each aura attached to it uh, i believe in the fate reforged fate restored i'm never going to get that name right in that video i had mentioned that you know we're getting enough pieces so that i think there's a chance for a ultron deck so like a like a boggles kind of hex proof or uh, an egg an aggressive enchantress you know theros block gave us a lot of tools and this block trying staying with the good old r d way of making sure sets kind of pair up uh the cons block has its fair share of you want to put auras on this or auras that you want to put on things and this guy again not super exciting very niche but if you're looking to build that kind of deck or like looking to kind of brew around with it, uh, consider this gentleman. Elusive Spellfist, one in a blue for a 1-3 human monk. When you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. Uh, I know this is another one of those cards that will fit into the pet decks. Uh, I know there's people that have tried to brew kind of the Nivix Cyclops... Um, why can't I think of the original one? The Wee Dragonauts kind of deck. Uh, young Pyromancers. You know, creatures that heavily synergize off you casting cheap instants and sorceries. This is one of those guys that would fit into that deck. He's uh, He has a pretty good defensive stat, which is really key for these cards. Um, you know, 1-3 for 2, it's... Certainly not Highlander playable at that, but considering what you're trying to go for him, uh, I can see him see play in that. Jamoka Warrior, two mana, three one. That's it. That's all there is. You throw him in that three. You throw him in that white weenie build that is three power only kind of thing. This has got to be card number fourteen on that list. My God. Um, plus sides. He has human and he has warrior. Two good creature types for Cavern of Souls and other warrior based synergies that are now coming about dragon lord ojutai uh also known as the bane of my existence on magic online right now three white and a blue for a five four legendary creature elder dragon mm. uh flying as long as it's untapped it has hexproof and when he deals combat damage to a player you look at the top three cards of your library put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom uh I really like this card. This card scares the absolute crap out of me. Uh, it protects itself when you play it. Um, if you manage to untap with him, which is pretty easy, seeing as that Edict Effects or Board Sweepers are going to be the only real way of getting around it, um, then you can probably protect him. You probably have some kind of counter spells. And if this guy lives and starts hitting them, I... You're probably if you're probably gonna win if you control the Dragon Lord, and if you don't, and you're the one getting smacked for five, my condolences. This guy's pretty damn good. I'd like to see him in control. I'd like to see him in kind of uh, blue white. I mean, I guess it's still control, like a mid rangey tempo, 
maybe splash red, maybe splash back, uh, black. Um, that kind of uh, deck with more of a lower curve. Uh, he's a nice he's a nice finisher that provides card value. Uh, that's hard to deal with. What more do you need to say? Huh? Dragon Hunter, uh, one mana two one. I could stop right there, and you'd probably have to play it in white weenie. But wait, there's more. It's a human warrior that has protection from dragons, I know, very important, and can block dragons as though it had reach. So it's hard to say that these are upsides. I mean, they're obviously upsides, but how many dragons are you running into? I mean, there's probably three or four that regularly see play. Uh, but still, hey, one mana, two, one, good creature types with upsides. Den Protector. Uh, this is one of the cards that I didn't actually know if this would be worth playing. And there's a chance that people have tried it and it's hot garbage. But as a 2 mana 2-1, two, uh, creatures with power less than Den Protector's power can't block it. It's part of the whole cycle with uh, Silmgar's Assassin and a bunch of other crap that I didn't include in this list. Um, but this one, when you flip them over with Megamorph, uh, you get to regrowth, and that's pretty good. You get an instant speed regrowth. Um, maybe this guy sees play, uh, but it, I mean he's 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 grindy, right? He's grindy. He has evasion. Hello, Reverend Doctor Squash. Um, I want to believe that they, this guy is playable because he. I mean, it's value. It's just value. Um, but please tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, Deathmiss Raptor, uh, for some reason this card is $20, I, I don't know how. Uh, one and two green for a 3-3 three, three Death Touch, Lizard Beast. Uh, whenever a permanent you control is turned face up, you may return Deathmiss Raptor from your graveyard to the battlefield face up or face down, and then has Megamorph for five. So I doubt there are going to be many morphs out there. I mean, it's all Exalted Angel, and you can only play one. So you don't have to worry too much. But it's a 3-3 three, three Death Toucher for 3. So there's a chance that you want to slip them into aggressive decks. Uh, Red-green comes to mind. Black-green comes to mind. Uh, Mono-green, Stompy comes to mind. Uh, not much to say about this card as well. It's It's got a very narrow... There's a very narrow situation where you actually get to take advantage of the keyword that I'm sure is the reason why it's... $20 outside of uh, Death Touch because everybody knows how hard Death Touch is to find. Uh, even Sunstriker, 1 and 2 white for a 1-1 one, one Bird Warrior with Flying and Double Strike and of course Megamorph. Um, this is just a strict upgrade to Sky Hunter Skirmisher. The art's not as good but if you're playing that green, I guess it's almost five colors if you want to go really hard. Uh, if you're playing the double strike deck, uh, you're going to want this guy. I wouldn't really play him in White Weenie, but um, the double strike deck for sure. Because he happens to have the keyword double strike. Avatar of the Resolute. Double green for a 3-2 reach trample. My god, back in my day, for double green, you were damned happy if you got a 2-3. Now you're getting three twos with reach, with trample. And what's this? When it enters the battlefield... Wait, it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each other creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it? My god, that'll never come up. But it might. It actually might. So, you know what? This guy's got three upsides, three power on two mana, uh, slap him in Stompy, play him along the Clonian Tuskers and Swordwise Centaurs and all that jazz. Uh, I'm sure you can play him in other decks as well. Red-green. Uh, I wouldn't play him in green-white as those decks tend to look to be more um, death and taxes kind of oriented, or rather they should be. Uh, but yeah, this guy, uh, this guy is a. <laughs> there are a lot of cards that you can show to as an example of power creep. But when you take like green, where it's just you should be happy for getting a creature with power greater than the CMC, and you slap on this. Oh, Jesus, you know, back in my day. Uh, Arishin, Arashin Foremost. Uh, one and two white for a 2-2 two -two human warrior with double strike. Uh, when he ETBs or attacks 
Another target warrior creature you control gains double strike into undeterred. So, it's a three mana double striker uh, with two power. So, you slip him into the double strike deck. Um, and when he, he gives another warrior double strike, and at this time, you know, White Weenie has enough warriors. There are enough warrior creatures printed that uh, maybe this guy slips in, and a lot of these three power guys happen to have a warrior slapped onto them, so uh, maybe check them into that deck. Obviously really good with equipment and whatnot, um, but if you're running just straight up white weenie, I wouldn't slap him in. There are that, The three drop slot in that deck is very, very competitive. Speaking of competitive slots on white weenie, Anafenza Kintree Spirit. Double white for a 2-2 legendary creature, Spirit Soldier. Uh, whenever another non-token creature ETBs, Bolster 1. Uh, Bolster is choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control and put a 1-1 counter on it. So it's a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with an upside uh, that makes all your other creatures bigger. Um, it's... So White Weenie, I like this guy. I like him a lot. Um, I am almost at the point where I'd say uh, auto-include her but uh, she also happens to combo with kitchen finks so put her in the Malira pod the pattern re or the the pattern rector decks uh, that kind of kind of jazz it combos it attacks I just realized I've said jazz like five times in this fucking video my apologies um yeah like this card moving on Myth realized one white enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a lore counter on Myth realized. Shout out to lore counters. Uh, two and a white. Put a lore counter on Myth realized. Shout out to lore counters. Pay one white until end of turn. Myth realized becomes a monk avatar creature in addition to its other types and gains this creature. <laughs> this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of wait for it lore counters on it. Shout out to lore counters. So. When I saw this card, I thought, oh, cool, it's a win condition for Enchantress. But I've also come across people playing this in Tempo Shells. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, because it doesn't do any... I mean, it, you can see it as a creature, but it doesn't do anything by itself. Like, you can't play it, have it be a creature. You have to do more things in order for it to do anything, really. Um... So I'd probably just stick to playing this in um, Enchantress decks or maybe if somebody finds a place for it in like a blue-white deck, um, like a control-based deck. But even then, I'd, I'd have to imagine that Luminarch Ascension is probably just a better fit. Uh, Glaring Aegis, the most boring card in this review. Uh, one white, it's an aura. When Glaring Aegis enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus three. I'm only including this for the Voltron Aggro Enchantress deck or the Hexproof deck or whatever you want it to be uh, because it's a really cheap enchantment that gives plus one plus three. I mean, it's a step above holy strength, people. Uh, and then the the actual ability to tap down something is pretty helpful when some of these creatures, you know, it doesn't matter how big you make a guy, if they have an idiot to block it, you know, they're probably going to do that. Uh, again, not super exciting, a little niche, uh, a little underwhelming, but it has a place, damn it. Secure the Wastes. X and a white instant put X warrior tokens into play. Um, I like this card. I think there's a spot for it in like a black white red token stack in Jeskai Ascendancy token stack um, maybe even in control I mean you don't draw a card <clears throat> excuse me you don't draw a card off of it but it's cheaper than Decree of Justice uh, that said they can counter this so that kind of plays out and who, who's even playing Decree of Justice nowadays I hope a couple of you are um, not the most powerful of cards but it's a pretty good bang for your buck as far as token generators are considered, and being an instant is uh, quite nice. Colagon's Command. Uh, one, black and a red. Choose two. It's an instant. Uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Target player discards a card. Destroy target artifact. Or shock. So we got a shatter, a shock, uh, just like a discard effect, and a raise dead. Um... 
but you get to pick two of them. It's super cheap. It's flexible. All these things are super real. Um, it's nice to have artifact destruction. I mean, I like this card. It's this is a not, one of the cards from the set that has seen kind of widespread play amongst uh, uh, modern, and I've seen it pop up in a couple of standard decks. So I imagine this card has already seen its way into Highlander. Speaking of cards that have popped up in other formats. <laughs> Excuse me. We have Collected Company. Three and a green instant. Look at the top six cards of your library. Put up to two creatures with CMC three or less from them, from among them onto the battlefield. The rest go on the bottom. Four mana for two creatures. Uh, instant speed. This card is insane. Uh, play it in creature decks, please. Uh, I imagine it's much stronger in the combo-based creature decks uh, or like uh, Cradle Hoof decks than just straight up value creatures. But even then, I mean, you're probably going to want to play this. Uh, this card's phenomenal. I don't think there has to be much to say about this. Atarkus Command, red and a green, instant, choose two. Opponents can gain life this turn, deals three damage to each opponent. You may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain reach until end of turn. So at worst, it can be a skull crap. Or that's not the worst. I guess the worst is you have no creatures, you put a land, and you pump nothing. I apologize for the dog in the background. It does not belong to me. Um, but, I mean, it can be a skull crack, which is kind of nice. Uh, if you really need to ramp, I mean, I guess you can. But where it really will pack a punch, I imagine is going to be uh, through the modes of simultaneously dealing three damage to them and pumping multiple of your creatures uh, to clock in for more damage which could effectively just make it two mana deal five um, alternatively uh, if they have a life linking creature pump your team they can't gain life knock it off and your guys survive um, it's flexible it's cheap it's aggressive I like it I like it uh, anticipate one in the blue, you instant, you look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your deck. That's right, folks. It's impulse, but you get to look at one less card, and you can't sneak in a shuffle if people don't know the errata. But the reason I put it on here is because impulse is very good, and there are some decks that really like impulse. Um, and I think some of those decks will also like anticipate. I like this card in high tide, easy to cast. Um... Instant speed, card selection, synergizes with Sapphire Medallion. I also like this card in Storm. Maybe it's not good enough, but again, instant speed, card selection. It's, I mean, this has been done before. Uh, I like this card. Don't play it in everything, though. Now on to the, air quotes, trap cards. We have Sidisi Undead, not going to pronounce that. Three and double black for a 4-6. <laughs> Zombie Naga. Oh my. Uh, Death Touch with Exploit. Uh, when this creature ETBs, you can sacrifice another creature. When uh, Sidisi exploits a creature, you get a Demonic Tutor. Uh, this, I mean, it's a sack outlet. So you can, I, you, I guess you can justify playing it in like a Pattern Rector deck. Or like a black-green um, black green kind of like value recurring nightmare kind of creature deck uh, and maybe it has a slot in there or in birthing pod lists but I j it just seems clunky like to, if you're going to play a 5 drop or a 6 drop you know you got, it's got to really do something got to get real value and maybe this guy does and maybe I'm just flat out wrong um but to me, this reeks of a card where people think it's really good, and then it just ends up kind of falling flat. Yeah. Uh, Death Touch is nice. So, Dragon Whisper, speaking of cards that might fall flat, 2 red for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Human Shaman. <laughs> With the name Dragon Whisper, I just want to just wanna soak that in for a second. Uh, pay a red, gains flying until end of turn. Pay one and a uh, red, it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Then it has formidable. Four and double red, put a four, four dragon uh, with flying onto the battlefield, only if you have eight power or more. So it's like a red uh, cold snap knight. It's a pump knight, but in red. Um, 
And that's probably a bad thing, because the red two drop slot, hyper competitive, and I don't think this guy makes the cut. Uh, it's nice that, I mean, it kind of has this Kargan Dragonlord feel to it, but that's probably just because of the mana cost, the name, and all that shit. Uh, I can't see this card being better than all the other cards you'd want to play. Ojutai's Command. Two, a white, and a blue. Uh, choose two. Return target creature with CMC two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. You gain four life, counter target creature spell, and draw a card. Uh, maybe this card is actually good. Uh, the only reason I'm putting it in here is just because I really hate Absorb. I think Absorb's not that great. I mean, I understand if there's a lot of mono red, you're a blue-white player, and you, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, and this has some qual. It certainly has qualities of Absorb, but you're holding up four mana for it. Uh, four life is great. The fact that you can only count a creature, eh, sometimes it's a cryptic command, sometimes it's a more expensive absorb. Uh, I like that there's like a possibility for a super defensive role with it where you can return something like a wall of uh, omens and gain four life. Take that aggro deck. But all of it just seems too much in a slot uh, that, again, competitive slot, four drops in control, Especially if it's an instant, right? You Why have this when you could have Cryptic or Dismiss? Or maybe this card's better than Dismiss. Uh, I don't know. Cryptic, Dismiss, uh, Factor Fiction, that kind of thing. Um, tell me tell me if I'm wrong, because I'm genuinely interested about this card. I like these new commands. I really do. But uh, I'm not sure on this one. Draconic Roar. One in a red. As an additional cost to cast Draconic Roar, you may reveal a dragon card from your hand. Uh, it deals 3 damage to a creature, but if you reveal a dragon card or control a dragon as you cast it, it deals 3 damage to its creature's controller. So it's this really weird searing blaze lash out kind of effect where sometimes you just need to dome a creature. But hey, if you got a dragon lying around, you got a searing blaze on your hands, folks. Uh, but who the fuck has a dragon lying around, am I right? It's a little too specific for me. I can't see this card really seeing any play. Uh, unless you do happen to have a lot of dragons in your deck, or even a fair amount. But then those 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 decks don't want these kind of cards. They don't look for that. They have, uh, they have the sweepers, you know? You got your Slag Storm, you got your Flame Break, you anger the gods. Why are you playing the Draconic War, huh? Alright, Sarkin Unbroken. We've got, I think he's the second three-colored Planeswalker here. Uh, and the second bad three-colored Planeswalker, am I, am I right? Uh, four loyalty. Two, and then green, blue, red. Plus one. Draw a card, then add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, minus two, you get a 4-4 four, four dragon with flying. Minus eight, search your library for any number of dragons and put them onto the battlefield. This card screams EDH to me. Uh, I could be wrong, though. Maybe it's playable, but it doesn't look like it. It's very hard to cast. Uh, I can't see a rug deck playing it, a rug control or anything like that, really wanting to play it. Um, and I certainly wouldn't play this in five color stacks, but uh, hey, that's just me. Narset Transcendent. Oh, god damn it, I broke the internet. Uh, two white and a blue, six loyalty, plus one. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a non-creature, non-land, you may reveal it, put it into your hand. Minus two, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell from your hand this turn, it gains rebound. Minus nine, your opponents can't cast non-creature spells. So this card is so fucking tricky to analyze. Um, I mean, I can take the easy route and just say it's not good enough, but it, so four mana, that's reasonable, and blue-white, good color combination, six loyalty, that's a lot of loyalty, it's plus one, you look at the top card, if it's not a creature, not a land, you can put it into your hand. So, kind of sucks that it's not, that you can't get lands off of it, but... I mean, it, I get what they're going with. It's got the whole prowess kind of rebound uh, Jeskai feel to it. Uh, so I respect the design point from that. Minus two, casting next instant or sorcery. It gains rebound. This one I like. Uh, I like that ability. I like it a lot, actually. Um, but 
you're never really using it the turn that you play it, I feel. I mean, maybe you are and you're just the luckiest person in the world. You happen to have eight mana lying around. Uh, but I can't see yourself doing that right away. Uh, maybe on five you play this guy minus two and then cast a ponder. Who we talk about value down. Um, but the thing to note is that the neither the first ability nor the second ability um, actually protect her, which is where her huge ass loyalty comes into play. I guess you're banking on that and the general nature of blue white control decks to actually protect Narset. Uh, and then minus nine, you get an emblem with your opponents can't cast non-creature spells, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great effect, and hitting nine off this guy, if you're playing him, assuming that you tick up immediately and continue to tick up, uh, it, it can lock people out of the game. Uh, at the same time, it, stop, it doesn't stop the number one way that people die. Black Lotus Tendrils Yagwa. Just kidding. Um, doesn't stop creatures. You know, people are usually killing each other with creatures. Maybe sometimes planeswalkers, but mostly creatures. Uh, so she's in this weird kind of scenario where she's big enough to protect herself, but doesn't actually protect her. Like, she protects herself from her own uh, <clears throat> size. And... That's really it. She's like a planeswalker that you want to play after you've played other planeswalkers. And I don't think that's where you ever want to be. Um, yeah, this card this card stumped me because before I did this review and before I really kind of looked at and thought about the cards in this set, uh, I had included her in the deck and then kind of regretted that decision and then flip-flopped, fleet flooped you know how it goes. Uh, but please tell me, is this card playable? I mean, you're coming here for me to tell you whether or not it's playable, and you're saying, oh, now he's expecting us to tell him. That's a bad trade-off, I know, but you got to do me a favor one time. Anyways, that has been my Dragons of Tarkir throwback review. Uh, if you like this, please like the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe, share it with your friends, family, relatives, your boss, your boss's daughter and or son. Your dog might like it. You know, the Germans might like it. Uh, I'm sure there are Swedish people, Finnish people, and everybody else out there. I don't want to end this video by offending our European friends. I apologize. I'm a mess. Anyways, I'm Benjamin Wheeler. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, and if you like that, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more hidden gems, set reviews, deck techs, and much more. Also, be sure to follow our Canadian Highlander Facebook page, and check out our newly updated website at canadianhighlander.wordpress.com. Links for our various podcasts will also be included in the description below. Thanks again, and feel free to leave any questions, comments, or concerns, and one of the council members will be sure to answer as best as they can. And remember folks, there can be only one.